All right, it's splitter time. I think debond is a little bit too heavy, so let's make it out of carbon fiber. That's a good one. Yeah. Well, when I say carbon fiber, I obviously mean carbon Kevlar because I just love that stuff. Anyway, so here's my splitter. Not splitter, diffuser. Why am I saying diffuser? So, as you can see, it was a really, really simple shape. It's a 3 mil debond, and I actually used uh, a sewer pipe uh, to bend it at, the, at this radius. And then we have two simple separators. Uh, look really mean, somewhat effective. Um, but I think we can improve it because we are changing the, the rear bumper ever so slightly. And um, I mean, why not? <laughs> I mean, just why not? So the plan is to make a little mold shape similar to this because I want it a bit longer maybe 50 mil longer then we want a uh, built-in gurney flap a little lip on the side just to increase in on each side and most likely slightly different profile because I want it not flat as this um, straight flat straight as you can see but I want it to be like a wing and for that I went to V and Q and we got this MDF. It's nice and bendy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a frame with a bit of wood and then we're gonna layer that stuff on top. Each side I want the same cutout. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna either ruin this diffuser, cut them off and attach them to the sides of a new one and then smooth it over with filler or bend new ones let me know if you want to buy this diffuser it's for sale um, but you do need to get rid of the exhaust sorry yeah all right so in order to do this we need something underneath because when we lay the fiber it needs to sort of flange out um, a very fancy word I'm using there flange out so we can either use Um, so this sheet is 1200 by 1 meter. I think that's pretty good. I don't think I want it any wider um, because it was already pretty close to the suspension point and it was a pain. So we need to make it dimensionally the same. I mean, it's pretty big as it is. So we're going to use this as a backing. Now, the height, I reckon exactly the same height, maybe a little bit higher. The way I'm doing it is basically I need to make three internal ribs on which this will be sitting. Because it's going to be radius ever so slightly. I need them to be exact. So we basically cut three pieces of plywood. They are 22 by 88 centimeters. Now we're gonna uh, screw them together so they don't move. And we're gonna create a profile. Then we're gonna cut it, sand it, and we're gonna glue it to this board in the center. And that's where this piece of uh, MDF is gonna sit and create this profile. Yeah.
I've actually been asked quite a few times my previous <coughs> diffuser how did I bend it and that's how Four inch, what is it? Five inch gutter pipe, a little uh, metal tube in there so it doesn't wobble. Two clamps, apply a little bit of heat because uh, there's plastic on the inside, just makes it a little bit easier. And then you just apply your weight and you just bend it, and it gives you a really nice, perfect diameter. too dark last night when I was finishing up check this out that's a basic shape is there so we're changing it ever so slightly so the center section is going to be raised um, obviously the carbon is going on top so you can imagine here is the end so the center section I'm not sure if I'm going to introduce a third separate in here kind of like 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 it is but the previous one was like that you see just uh, two on each side which are represented by this the overall dimensions are roughly the same it's just a little bit longer i made it essentially 50 mil um wider at the end so it'll stick out a little bit more with a slight plunge but overall the shape is the same this this part is slightly lower because on the other one it was all the same size but we're gonna have a sort of a a small step in here um, I need to make plunges here so a bit more for the um, MDF here and then we need to carry on in here just to sort of create a shape so when it does it we, we still have a flange all the way around <laughs> oh my god this is fucking crazy sorry for my language um, yeah it is what it is I mean that looks mean um, obviously on the real one is going to be higher higher up because the suspension is preventing it because of those flanges but as you can see we have plenty of clearance of space like I said it's uh, pretty much the same the same size um, oh, I am absolutely loving this this shape is going to be so good okay well yeah let's apply some uh, filler let it dry sand it and then yeah let's make some composite materials 72 hours late so i skipped a few steps of the process as you can see it's pretty much done the mold um yeah it was just pouring a bit of uh, applying filler and then sanding and then whatever it's painted. Uh, that's not a gel coat. That's just the spare paint I had. Uh, nice and green. No particular reason. Just uh, just because. Anyways, I've uh, wet sanded it. So now we can apply release agent. Not sure which one yet. Um, and then we can do the reinforcements. Got a nice parcel from Easy Composites. So we're going to use core material this time. Especially for this thing because... It has a big, large, flat surface area. Yeah, this is cell 75, 3 mil core material, PVC foam. Um, it's bendable with a bit of heat. 
We're gonna have a sheet at the, uh, the front, slightly at the, at the side, cut this bit off and blah, 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 blah. Reinforcement. Um, yeah, apply some filleting wax. So enough chit chat, let's get to it. By the way, I think it's, it's worth mentioning to give me a bit more working time with uh, such a large area. I've used slow and fast hardener mixed together at the correct ratio by Easy Composites. Basically, that gave me at least triple the amount of working time because usually when you're using uh, fast, fast hardener, the setting time of your resin is about 15 minutes. So you have to work really really fast and as a large area and it probably took me about two and a half hours to lay it all out that wasn't enough time so by mixing these two together you can increase that time but also the setting time before you can peel off has been increased so it's been um, around 26 28 hours since uh, we've done the laminate so let's demold it can't wait That's a diffuser. The next day. The center section fins are all pre-cut. I also made L-shaped brackets. Again, carbon fiber. Simply used metal profile for the shape. And then about eight layers of uh, carbon. So they are super, super thick and super rigid. So we have four of those, so those are going to attach like this, let me show you, like this, so it will glue on, on the inside over here, and also two brackets right there at the bottom. Also what I want to do is I actually want to make some, what are they called? Um, I was researching it yesterday, I love the word. Vortex generators. Um, I know it's a bit controversial and stuff like that, but 
I've been um, reading quite a bit about aerodynamics lately, for obvious reasons. Um, and uh, they are extremely effective. Basically what the vortex generators do, there are a ton of videos on YouTube, I'm not even gonna try and explain it better. Basically, they create vortices. Obviously, as the name suggests, the whole reason being is that when you have a curved surface, when the air goes over it, if the cur surface is really curved, then you will get a separation of the flow. Um, basically, the flow is in two layers. Boundary layer is the middle layer in between. Then you have the attached flow and then the high energy one. You want them all combined, so it's lots of energy. So what vortices do, they create a spiral vortex effect, which brings the high energy airflow into the boundary layer, mixes all up and keeps it attached. There are quite a few different designs. Um, I think I will do small straight fins, but with about 10 degree angle. Why 10 degree? Uh, again, from the research um, that I've done, 10 degrees is one of, uh, it's kind of an optimal for, you still create the vortex, but um, less resistance and drag and all that. Much. So I have this old, I think it's quite thick. It's about three mil thick. So I think we can cut simple shapes out of this. Not many, I think all I will need is probably six of them. So something like, like this, literally a small little winglet. Cut six of those and then I can epoxy them straight onto the splitter with a 10 degree offset angle. So they go sort of like, like that. Um, in theory, this should definitely help us keep the flow attached into the diffuser, giving us even more downforce. Let's cut those and then uh, I'll show you how I stick them on. Later. So what I did last night is I didn't do what I said I was going to do. I said I was going to show you how I'm glue this, gluing this on, but I decided not to. Essentially, all it is is just gluing those things on it. So, here we are. Um, so, we have our center section fins. Like I said, I made those brackets. So, it's holding two at the front, and then it's glued straight onto the side of the thing. Then, we seal the inside so it's nice and smooth. And we have the vortex generators. Like I said, only six of them. They're only small. So it shouldn't give any disturbance, whatever. But the theory is that it's going to do that. And making all the air go through like that. I think I might put a bit more sealant on this side as well. We are so that's the diffuser done well not 100% done I still need to fit it the only reason why I'm not fitting it and showing you how it is because the diffuser is finished but the mounting points I'll need to do once the fuel tank is here which I'm hopefully picking up from age fabrications on Monday have a look I mean I think it's fairly aggressive um, the angle is pretty much the same as it was on the last one we have my vortex generators here and then this is how it's going to come close to the middle beam and yeah it's uh, sticking out about 80 mil more than uh, the old one but it's all within the time attack regulations 
So as always, time will tell. Um, it's all to do with testing. Um, we're gonna do some tough, tough tests with uh, some wool uh, strings and actually I'm gonna try something else. Guys, what can I say? Um, don't forget to subscribe to, to my channel. If you like this video, click like. If you didn't like this video, they are said click dislike because I need your feedback because uh, by statistics I don't actually get any dislikes like I would not believe it so I need I need to know what you guys think so I can improve anyways I'll see you in the next one bye <laughs>